Watching the WWE today, it, you sit there and you say to yourself, at some point in time, they got to snap out of it. At some point in time, they got to figure this out. At some point in time, you would think, you would think, that they would have to finally come to their senses and see what you see. But of course, this is a popular refrain that comes time after time after time, especially over the course of the past several years, if not throughout the past decade, which magically coincides with John Cena's time at the top. Hmm, imagine that. Hashtag Breakfast Club Rules, bitches. But then Kevin Owens comes on the scene in NXT. And he becomes the NXT champion. And then, holy shit, here comes Kevin Owens out to answer John Cena's Open United States Championship Challenge. A new face on the WWE scene. A guy that brings a following that he's had for years with him to the WWE. A guy that doesn't look like everybody else. A guy that doesn't act like everybody else. A guy that's aggressive. A guy that's fearless. He's in your face. He's unafraid. He's also cerebral at the same time. And you look at him, and the WWE starts him off and features him as if he matters. And you latch on to that. And he's put into a story that matters. In fact, because he was working with the most important guy in the company, honestly, he's in the story that matters the most. And you get your hopes up. And you're sitting there and trying to convince yourself that this time it's going to be different. The WWE is finally learning. John Cena has finally figured it out. Vince McMahon, Kevin Dunn are starting to get it. Change is going to come. After so many times of wishing for it and hoping for it and wanting it, it's here. It's going to happen. And as you get your hopes built up, even though you've been down this road before, and even though you start to have these little dreams and fantasies about how much better things could be, even though, again, you've been down this road before, you sit there and you keep plugging along. Because, by God, you've convinced yourself it's going to be different. And then the WWE surprises you at Elimination Chamber by having the NXT champion beat the United States champion, John fucking Cena, in his first ever pay-per-view match, 100% clean. No excuses, no interference, no hijinks, shenanigans, cheating, or bullshit. Kevin Owens beats John Cena. Kevin Owens is the legit better man on that night than John Cena. And you've convinced yourself, based off of what you've seen, Owens has got it. He's going to be big. He's going to become a star. This is the platform for him to do bigger and better things. We start envisioning him potentially working with Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. Or The Undertaker at WrestleMania. We're like, they're going to keep this guy in a main event spot, and he'll be the number two heel behind Seth Rollins, and it's going to be all gravy, smooth, no lumps, baby. Because he beat John Cena clean. Because, frankly, it's not a road that we travel down very often, so we don't really know how to react when the fuck it actually happens. So we get suckered in, and we get teased. But then what happens? Cena's merch sales drop a little bit between Elimination Chamber and Money in the Bank over only two weeks ago. And never mind what Owens Murph sells. They decide come money in the bank. They just got to protect the golden boy. They got to protect the prop. They have got to protect John Cena. And John Cena pins Kevin Owens. Because that's the same shit they always do. And that always makes for such compelling storytelling. Right? Right? So you sit there still. And even though you're mad. And even though you're upset. And even though you know how this is going to play out. And even though you know this is just another example of a new face being built up just to be fed to the John Cena monster and be discarded like it doesn't matter afterwards, you say, no, this time it's different. They've shown me what it can be like. And I want more, more, more! So what do you do? You shake the haters off, so to speak. You pop your collar. You dust yourself off. 
And you say, no, come Battleground. It's going to be for the title. This time it will be different. Especially once they have Kevin Owens drop the strap to Finn Balor July 4th in Tokyo. They've got the NXT title off of him now. He doesn't have a belt. Cena has a title. If Kevin Owens, who's already beaten him once, can't beat John Cena, then who the fuck's going to? By God, they wouldn't do it this time. They can't do it this time. They have to understand. They have to know that Kevin Owens has to beat John Cena here at this moment in time and become the U, new, 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 easy for me to say, United States champion. But then along the way, what happens? The WWE has five weeks to build up between Money in the Bank and Battleground, and as so often the case, they can't figure out how to keep things simmering. They can't figure out how to keep the flames burning hot. So they start to do dumb things with Owens. Then they inject Cesaro into it. Then, for some reason, they inject Rusev into the freaking mix. And all of a sudden, they start to treat Kevin Owens a little bit more and more like everybody else. But you're like, eh, that's the WWE. It ain't going to be perfect. Frankly, it ain't going to be great. Most of the time, it ain't going to be good. But every once in a while, we still got that glimmer of hope. And the hope was still there. And you're like, nah, they wouldn't do it again, would they? They wouldn't possibly have John Cena beat Kevin Owens at Battleground, would they? Because if anything else, if they had Kevin Owens win, that would mean one more big money match between the two of them at SummerSlam for the title in a rematch. You had it all thought out. You had it all planned out. Maybe Owens wipes him out. Because even after he lost at Money in the Bank, he sit there and wiped out Cena. You're like, they're still taking him seriously. They're not going to give up on him. They're not just going to build him up to feed him to Cena and then spit him back out and not give a shit about him afterwards. Well... <laughs> then, of course, the battleground happens. <laughs> and it's another John Cena match with bocce moves all over the fucking place. Nothing but a bunch of near finishes, false finishes, near falls, fucking sloppy execution, not even trying to hide, you're calling out the spots. A match that it's literally a spot to get to a spot to get to a spot where there's no cohesiveness. There's no real storytelling at all. You got guys kicking out of each other's finishers numerous freaking times. And at the end of the day, when all is said and done, on the one hand, you've got Cena looks like he's starting to complain to the refs. Just so that way he can still find a way to fucking beat Kevin Owens. And oh, this time, just to sit there and say, up yours, wrestling fans. We're going to make them tap out. We're going to make them tap out. Never mind the fact that it's your top face, so to speak, that's supposed to appeal to kids and he's basically using a choke out maneuver to do it. The guy that he's using the maneuver on to make him tap out just did the move 10 times better than this ass clown that's used it for years as a signature submission as a non-technical wrestler has ever done. Owens executed Cena's finishing submission better than Cena and yet Owens is fucking tapping out to this shit. What in the bluest of blue fucks is this company thinking? What in the hell could possibly be the rationale or justification for this? If Cena was such a goddamn great top guy, you wouldn't have to go to such great lengths to fucking protect him, period. If you actually cared about the future, you actually cared and paid any lip service at all to all that bullshit you've said about how you want to build up the next generation. Well, here's a guy that's clearly going after you. Here's a guy that's trying to reach for that brass ring. So, of course, you said, Vince, my precious, my precious. And you took that shit back. And you said, I'm never giving it back to you ever again. Fuck you. That's exactly what happened. You have Kevin Owens win against John Cena the first time, just so that way you can build up Kevin Owens even more, just so that way that once again, John Cena once again could look better once again by beating him once, and if that's not good enough, he'll beat him again. And this time, let's go above and beyond, let's have him fucking tap out. What's the point anymore? There's no more reason for Kevin Owens to wrestle John Cena. He just lost to him twice in a row. He just quit against him. And frankly, going forward, why would anybody ever want to care to see Kevin Owens versus John Cena again in any way, shape, or form at any level in that company, especially for a world title? 
Well, Kevin Owens lost to him two times in a row in the fashion that he did in the way that he did. Oh, but wait, there's more. We decide on Raw that instead of instantly putting Kevin Owens into something big and something that matters, we're going to largely ignore him. We're going to give him the jobber treatment, whereas guys like John Cena and Randy Orton and Seth Rollins are backstage. You've got guys like Kevin Owens having to come out and be the guy a part of the group that breaks up the fight between Brock Lesnar and The Undertaker. That's when you know you've reached you don't fucking matter status in the WWE is when you get sent out for that type of shit. They didn't send Roman Reigns out there, but they sure as fuck sent Kevin Owens out there. So they gave him that jobber treatment, and then they decided to put him in a three-on-three tag team main event to where for whatever the fuck reason he just walks out, and that's it. So in two months' time, we've taken potentially the most interesting character the WWE has and just turned him into another heel. We've taken a guy that could legitimately move some merch and has moved some merch, a guy that could help your WWE Network performance, a guy that could help increase your exposure to NXT, a guy who could become a decent-sized player for you in the WWE with future big-time opponents in the works, potentially, like Roman Reigns, like The Undertaker, like Brock Lesnar. And we've decided to bitch-job him out to John Cena because we don't think he has it. And by God, it doesn't matter what the fans think. It doesn't matter what the audience says. It's more important for us to be right than to do the right thing. When you get to the point where you get that vengeful and that vindictive and that petty to where as a business you're more concerned about being right than doing what's right for business, that's when you know it's time for you to get the fuck out of the business. That's exactly what it is with the WWE. If you don't care about anybody else, then why have anybody fucking else? If it's going to be the John Cena show, then don't give us the illusion of it being anything else than the John Cena and sometimes Brock Lesnar show. Then only feature John Cena. Make Raw a three-hour documentary about behind the scenes of his life every single week. Because it's clearly all the fuck you give a shit about. I mean, literally at this point in time, it's more believable if a guy comes down to the ring and I keep saying, I'm going to continue to keep saying it, and John Cena says, you're going to challenge me, bitch, for the U.S. title? I'm John Cena. Lay down. One, two, three, it's over. We save everybody a bunch of fucking time. It's so much more believable and it makes so much more sense than anything else they fucking do because at the end of the day, it doesn't fucking matter because it always comes back to the same asshole. Kevin Owens is just the most recent example of the WWE not giving a fuck about the fans, not giving a fuck about the future of their company, not giving a fuck about their talents that aren't named John Cena or Brock Lesnar. It's just another example, again, of just how badly they run business nowadays where they're more concerned about being right than doing right. And it's just like everything else. It's a waste of fucking time. Why even bother to sit there and give a shit about anybody in this company anymore? Because at the end of the day, if they ever get any traction and they ever really start to get over, they just get fed to the fucking Cena monster. Or if somebody behind the scenes wants to prove a point and prove themselves right, they will do, hey, Chris Jericho, I hope you're paying attention, you stupid son of a bitch. They'll sabotage him. You don't sit there and take Kevin Owens from wrestling three straight pay-per-views against John Cena to give him the fucking jobber treatment in a Lesnar taker brawl. You just don't do that. Unless you're content with just wasting everybody's fucking time. Which is clearly fine with the WWE. And I guess if we continue to watch, we should be fine with it too. Because the WWE, all they're doing is wasting their time. If you've learned anything from the whole Kevin Owens experience, and even myself, I got, got caught up with it, I gave us a, a little bit of a reminder now. If you have any hope, lose it. If you have any delusions about things getting better, forget about it. If you have dreams that brighter days are ahead, ding dong, dumb dicks! It ain't happening. Stop wasting your time thinking about it.